Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. When it makes sense to replace injection molding with SLS 3D printing. My name is Maria Ma, the Marketing Campaign Coordinator for Engineering.com and I'm joined by our speakers for today. Welcome Megan Liu, Supply Chain Engineer at Formlabs. Megan works on product and raw material supply chain operations as part of Formlabs global sourcing team. Also with us is Michael Cornell, head of research and design at Battle Beaver Customs. Michael has utilized the versatility of 3D printing to keep ahead of the ever-changing industry to cement Battle Beaver Customs as the controller of choice in the world of professional esports. Hi everyone, like Marie said, my name is Megan. I work on the supply chain team at Formlabs and I'll be talking about using SLS 3D printing and in, in place of injection molding in today's webinar with Michael. Um, just wanted to first cover a few things that we'll be talking about today. The first thing is that we'll give a few introductions about Formlabs as a company. We'll talk about what a, give a brief overview on what injection molding is, what SLS 3D printing is, and then the bulk of our discussion will mostly be about manufacturing applications. We'll give you a brief overview of different types of applications where we think it makes sense to use SLS 3D printing, and as well as some case studies. And at the very end, we will conclude and open it up to any questions that the audience has. Great, so the first introduction is who is Formlabs? And I would like to just first start with our mission, which is to expand access to digital fabrication so that anyone can make anything. And this really came to be because I think historically 3D printing has either been thought of as a really like a type of hobbyist machine or lower resolution or a lower end printer, or on the completely opposite side, it's something that's very expensive, it's very industrial and mostly unattainable from um, a lot of industry standpoint and most definitely from an individual standpoint. But at Formlabs, we're really driven by the goal of bridging this gap and we aim to make really high performance 3D printing solutions more accessible to everyone. And the first thing that we really started with was stereolithography or SLA. And with our form printer product lines, we introduced desktop printers that produce functional high quality prototypes as well as end use parts very quickly. And so the Form 3 Plus and Form 3L are currently make up our SLA affordable industrial quality 3D printer product line. But in addition to the printers themselves, Formlabs also offers over 30 different types of resins, print preparation software, and post-processing accessories for the printers to provide a full production ecosystem that customers are really able to use all the way from print setup to cleaning and holding their final parts in their hands. And we've seen such overwhelming success in the SLA line that this is something that we really are hoping to replicate with the SLS technology. And um, the launch of Fuse One and SIF last year really marked our entrance into the SLS line and technology. These, with these new products, we've introduced one of the very first affordable SLS printers, and we're already seeing a lot of great success and growth with Fuse. And as we continue to grow in the next few years and launch more materials and continue to expand our SLS offerings, we're really excited to see where this technology takes us. And now I'll pass it off to Michael to give a quick introduction. Hello, I am Michael Cornell here to speak for Battle Beaver Customs. Unless you spend a lot of time playing Call of Duty, you probably haven't heard of Battle Beaver. So I'd like to take some time to talk about us and what we do. Uh, so if you have never played a video game before, uh, or perhaps only if you play games casually, you might hear the words custom gaming controller and think to yourself, that seems kind of frivolous. But something you have to realize is that over the past decade, esports has become a multi-billion dollar industry. For the people playing at this level, they need a controller that is built for their needs and will give them an edge over their competition. Even for people not in esports, the idea of having a controller uniquely built for them is extremely appealing. The custom controller market has been around for quite some time, but Battle Beaver got it started in 2015 
after we realized that there wasn't a reliable option for a competition ready controller. With the development of our smart triggers and custom thumbstick tension, we were able to stand out amongst our competitors. We have utilized 3D printing for our controller since 2016, but it wasn't until we acquired our fuse in 2021 that we were able to fully use 3D printing as a replacement to many of our injection mold needs. Now, even if you've never sent a part to get injection molded, you've absolutely used a part that was injection molded. It is the industry standard and has been the go-to solution for making production parts for decades now. The process starts with a CAD model that is then used to make a negative, typically out of metal via subtractive manufacturing by a CNC machine. As you can see in the example picture, this is a two-part mold, but you can have even three or more parts to a mold. This is referred to as the tooling process. This mold is then loaded into the injection unit. The most common version of this tool consists of a hopper filled with plastic pellets that feed into a heated barrel that then corkscrews, applying pressure and compressing the now melted material. This molten plastic is then pushed into the mold until it's completely filled and all the trapped vapor of the plastic is ejected out. The mold is then removed and allowed to cool so the plastic part can be retrieved. Then it is loaded back under the nozzle and this repeats until the desired amount of parts is reached. Although this industry has been around for as long as it has, there are still some problems that arise from using it. The majority of injection molding takes place overseas. This can cause for long lead times due to the necessity of sending prototypes back and forth until the part is production ready. This back and forth can be expensive in and of itself, but it is nothing compared to the upfront cost of the tooling. The more complicated the part, the more difficult it is to create a mold and the more money it can take to get something usable. The parameters for parts designed to be injection molded can be another hurdle to overcome, especially for those only familiar with using CAD for 3D printing. Draft angles for mold release and hollowed out pores to reduce uneven shrinkage limits the freedom of creativity. Even so, it is still an ideal solution in many cases due to the low cost of the individual parts themselves, aided by the fact that they get cheaper per part as more get made. Each of these parts are made with the same specifications with astonishing consistent sizing when considering the sheer volume of some of these production runs. With the advantage of being able to produce something on a large scale out of a variety of materials and colors, it is easy to see why it is so prolific. While the plastic manufacturing industry will always revolve around these huge production runs, the technology isn't monopolized by these giants. Recent advancements have opened up the path for more and more people to utilize injection molding. And I will hand it back over to Megan to speak on that. Thanks, Michael. So kind of as a intermediate step in between fully injection molded parts and fully 3D printed parts, there's also an option to use 3D printing for tooling applications. And so as adoption for 3D printing continues to grow, we're becoming a lot more creative in different ways that we're actually able to use 3D printing in our design workflows. And so in addition to just prototyping and printing out end use parts, we're also able to use it as a tooling solution to actually support conventional manufacturing methods by printing molds. And this is a really good solution to save time and money. And it is certainly not a one-to-one -one replacement of full-scale production tooling by any means, but the 3D printed molds that you see here on this slide are much less expensive and can be made much faster than a conventional metal die and are frequently used to help validate the mold design or even with short production run parts. And so in 2021, as mentioned previously, we started shipping the Fuse 1, which is the first affordable bench shop sized industrial SLS printer. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the technology, here's a quick primer and then a video that explains it much better than I do. So um, there are heaters all around the Fuse printer that are used to bring the print bed up to the print temperature or required temperature. There's also a removable build chamber on which the powder is dispensed, recoded, and the part is actually printed on this build chamber. There's also a powder delivery system that then dispenses, uh, it, it holds onto the powder, it dispenses it, and also helps prepare the powder to be sintered layer by layer. And the, the powder gets sintered with a laser that gets directed by a mirror to make sure the powder gets sintered in the correct geometry that each layer needs to be uh, printed at. 
And so the powder then gets dispensed again and another layer gets centered and this process repeats itself until we end up with the final part um, in the printer that we need to clean off. And so prior to Fuse, the only SLS machines available were really large industrial printers that were mostly cost prohibitive and inaccessible to most industries and most definitely most individuals. But Fuse has really changed the game. Fuse is a super versatile machine that can be used for really rugged functional prototypes, or you can also use it for end use parts like the bike seats, bike pedals, snowboard bindings, and all the other parts that you can see here. And so now I also want to pivot a little bit to talk about the actual applications that we see SLS 3D printing kind of taking over. The first one that I want to talk about is using 3D printing for short run production. So conventional manufacturing methods certainly make a lot of economic sense when we're referring to parts that have annual volumes of the hundreds of thousands or millions, but it actually starts to make less sense when you only need a few hundred or a few thousand of a specific part, because in manufacturing methods that require custom tooling, the unit price is very expensive in lower volumes when you amortize that cost of the tool over just a few hundred or even a few thousand parts. And SLS 3D printing is a really good solution for these types of components because the unit price of a component stays almost the same no matter how many you print. And so this is uh, really an area that 3D printing shines because you can keep your costs very low, very predictable, and your lead times very short. And the second application that I want to highlight was using 3D printing as a stopgap solution. And I'm sure that everyone tuning in today has felt the effects of the supply chain issues in the past couple of years, most notably. Um, not only are we seeing or continuing to see logistics delays as a result, but lead times for pretty much everything has increased even starting from the raw material. And this has left a lot of manufacturers stuck waiting for material to, rely, uh, to arrive. And this is where SLS 3D printing can really help out. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.